Within the past few months, a British expat living and working in Canada, Lizzie Taylor, known on the internet as Heidi Ho, has compiled a very useful analysis of all the other claimed sightings of Madeleine that week. Here are some extracts from her article, based on extensive analysis of all the relevant witness statements. Like everyone else, I once believed that Madeleine was seen during the holidays, as there were so many people that claimed to have seen her. As I started to collate the witness statements and scrutinise each one, I realised that apart from Fatima de Silva, who saw Madeleine and the family outside the apartment one day, there was not one statement that had a similar degree of credibility. I thought that the possibility of something happening to Madeleine prior to Thursday would be impossible, but after reading all the statements, every one, except Fatima, allows for doubt. Some were very obviously mistaken. She then goes on to list other witness statements from people I have not mentioned so far. Here is Lizzie Taylor's list and her comments. Cecilia Diaz Famino, receptionist at Millennium, described a shy Madeline and saw them on days they were not at restaurant, therefore not proof that she saw Madeline. She may have seen one of the other Tapas children. Geronimo Salcedes, Tapas barman, admits to not being able to recognise if it was Madeline. Luisa Ana de Nona de Azevedo Cotino, receptionist, claims to have seen Madeline with the McCann's friend Dr. Russell O'Brien, but his daughter was not in the creche that morning and looks very similar to Madeline, so likely mistaken. Georgina Jackson, tennis instructor, was non-specific about seeing Madeline, only that she was part of the group for that morning. Charlotte Pennington, creche nanny, we've already covered Charlotte Pennington earlier in the film. Diaz Romao, claimed seeing Madeline at times she was not there, according to the crash record. Emma Wilding did not know Madeline well and makes incorrect statement about seeing Jerry. Paula Cristina de Costa Vieira, cleaner, says she saw Madeline McCann twice leaving the Millennium at about 9.30 to 10 a.m., but they didn't go to the Millennium for breakfast. Non-specific comments that do not confirm Madeline's presence were made by Jez Wilkins, Stephen Carpenter and Daniel Stupp. So what about that one statement that Lizzie Taylor thinks may be credible, one by Fatima Maria Serafim de Silva Espada, the daughter of one of the cleaners? She says that she saw the McCanns and their three children. Let's look at the relevant extract from her statement, and let's note that this particular alleged sighting took place on the Sunday, and see what a tremendous amount of specific detail she gives to the police as she unfolds what she saw. She states that this took place on Sunday the 29th of April, just before she finished her morning shift at 13.30, as she had the afternoon off that day. At about 13.15 she went to help her mother, who was cleaning apartment 5i of the same block, situated on the first floor. She clearly remembers seeing the girl, accompanied by her siblings and mother, leave their apartment 5a and walk to the stairs leading to the floor above. She was very close to them, at a distance of about one metre, observing their movements for a few moments, because she was charmed by them. Madeline led the way with a plate, perhaps plastic, in her hand, bearing a piece of bread. As regards the clothes she was wearing, she only remembers a skirt, but cannot recall its description. She noted, because she thought them nice, the type of shoes she was wearing, tennis shoes, light in colour, she thinks, which had little lights along the soles, which lit up each time she stepped on the ground. Her siblings followed behind her, wearing the same kind of shoes, and each holding a piece of bread in their hands. Their mother followed behind them without holding their hands. She seemed to remember the mother was also carrying a plate. Moments afterwards, perhaps the time it took to close the apartment door, the father came out and also headed to the apartment upstairs. When asked, she does not remember whether the father pulled the door closed or locked it with a key. So here we have a statement which I suggest clearly is credible. It is not vague, it does not look contrived. Moreover, she sees all five members of the family together, and after that I would contend that no one ever sees all three children together that week. What about her shoes? Unfortunately, we do not see these in the last photo so we don't know if they are the same ones as this cleaner describes. However, we do have the photos taken what I think was the day before.
And on this one, the playground picture, we can see that Madeline is indeed wearing exactly the same shoes as described by the cleaner. In the last photo, Madeline is wearing a pink dress. The cleaner remembers Madeline wearing a skirt, she thinks, but can't remember what colour it was. It's easy to confuse a dress with a skirt. This incident happens at about 1.15pm on the Sunday. Is it possible that Madeline was already in the clothes in which she is seen in the last photo? I think it is. So, in the statement of Luisa Anacotino, we have a detailed, wholly credible statement that is also fully consistent with the last photo having been taken about an hour later by the pool, after lunch on the Sunday. The clarity and detail of this witness statement shows up the other statements from the Ocean Club staff for what they are, vague statements with no detail and therefore lacking credibility.